I want to ask everyone who's comfortable with it to close your eyes. You don't have to squeeze them shut, just let them close. Enjoy a moment of darkness. Now, imagine a star far, far away, like all stars are far away. The light from the closest one to us, besides our own sun, takes more than four years to get to us here on Earth. But of course, most stars we can see have sent their light from much farther away than that. Let's say the star you're imagining is out there in Andromeda, the closest galaxy to ours, right next door, at 2.5 million light years away, far away enough that its light has been making its way towards us since before there were humans to look up. Now, imagine that light is about to arrive. This lonely star's 2.5 million year long journey to reach us is almost at an end. But as you turn your eyes to look up to the sky, that starlight's not there. It's been obliterated right before reaching our eyes, scattered throughout the dome of light or sky glow, rising up overhead from cities and towns. Open your eyes now and let that idea sink in. Light pollution from our own planet has the power to blot out not only a single star, but the vast majority of the night sky and all of the mysteries and stories it holds. It also impacts us in many other ways. More than 80% of the world's population and 99% of the United States and Europe live under light polluted skies. And that light pollution is only growing. It's not hard to imagine a future with no remaining natural darkness left. I grew up in Moab, Utah. You may have heard of it, especially if you have Instagram. And uh, when I was a kid, I used to be able to walk out onto Main Street and look up and see the Milky Way. I spent my childhood summers sleeping on the trampoline, looking up at the night sky, and wondering how people ever tried to count the stars. There were so many. The night sky was an integral part of my childhood. It made me question my place in the universe and feel connected to something bigger than myself. Nowadays, when I take trips back to my hometown, I have to go outside of the city to catch a glimpse of our own home galaxy. Seeing the Milky Way has become a rare experience for a majority of the world's population in just a few generations. If light pollution continues to grow at its current rate, most kids today will reach adulthood never having seen it or even knowing what it is. Think about that. Your kids and theirs never really knowing the night sky or thinking it's just a handful of stars, never fully experiencing the grandeur of our own galaxy. All future generations lost to the magic of darkness and starlight. Why does this matter? Isn't having lights in our cities and homes more important than seeing a sparkling starry sky? Well, the two aren't mutually exclusive if the lighting is done right. And here's why else I think it matters. When you grow up without feeling both small and infinite, under the immensity of a truly dark sky, it's easy to forget that we are all just one people, hurtling through the universe on spaceship Earth, in it together. Under a night sky, divisions, boundaries, and differences all melt away, and humanity unites as one. When we feel connected to something much bigger than ourselves, solving our own problems together doesn't seem like such a big deal. And we might have a few big problems worth solving here on Earth. Let's take a look at some of the ways that light pollution is causing or worsening many of them. 
well under 1% of all outdoor light at night actually reaches a human's eye. This means that 99% of outdoor light at night is wasted light. Only 1% of outdoor lighting actually serves a useful purpose. And as we'll see in a bit, some of it can actually make us less safe. In the US alone, outdoor lighting creates 228 million metric tons of carbon dioxide each year. Cutting 99% of that could save us some $15 billion annually. Dark skies save money. And animals. Flooding a nocturnal environment with light destroys habitat, no less than bulldozing trees in a rainforest. Every single species is impacted by light pollution. Most birds migrate at night. They use the stars and other celestial cues to complete their Herculean journeys, thousands of miles across land and sea. Bright city lights both attract and disorient them through the loss of the night sky. Up to one billion birds die per year due to collisions with buildings, many in areas their migratory path should never have crossed. These are all birds, trapped in lights, beaming up towards the night sky. After turning these lights off for just 20 minutes, most, if not all, of these birds can find their way back to their migratory path. Hatchling sea turtles use the brightest part of their field of vision, historically the moon and the stars reflecting in the ocean, to find their way towards safety in the sea. Nowadays, instead of heading towards the water, they turn around and head towards the bright lights of beachside developments and towns. Few survive to adulthood, with estimates ranging from one in 1,000 to one in 10,000. These are just a few notable examples among many. Wildlife needs wild light. Human impacts are no less alarming. Light pollution is a social justice issue. Terrible light polluting fixtures are put up into high crime areas, trespassing into people's windows, making it difficult for them to sleep, and reinforcing the power dynamics of surveillance and control. This is an image showing a lighting project in New York City dubbed Omnipresence, which involves floodlights pointed at housing projects all night long. You would never see this type of lighting in a better resourced community. Residents have raised legitimate concerns about these lights. They report being unable to sleep and experiencing headaches. Studies show that Asian, Latino, and Black Americans experience light pollution in their neighborhoods at two times the rate of white Americans. Health impacts are disproportionate as well, but this is an area that can affect all of us. A growing body of research links light pollution to all forms of cancer, depression, diabetes, obesity, and of course, insomnia. In 2016, the American Medical Association released recommendations for limiting exposure to artificial light at night and utilizing dark sky friendly lighting practices. Beyond individual health, Light pollution also impacts the health and continuity of cultures. The stars have been intrinsic to civilization since there were humans on this earth. It's how we migrated across vast land and waterscapes. We tracked time with it, told stories with it, knew when to plant and harvest because of it. It's where the gods lived. Many cultures today still connect the stars to their daily lives. The night sky has been so important for so long. How can we just stand by as it's lost to most of our Earth and to all of the cultures still built around it? So let's say I've convinced you. Darkness is necessary, but you have something nagging in the back of your mind. Safety. Sure, seeing stars is cool, but we all want to feel safe. And I get it. 
But I am here to tell you that it is a myth that more light equals more safe. Oh, shoot. Oh, no, we're good. Okay. <laughs> Can anyone see what is lurking back there in the open gateway? Maybe. So the only difference between these two images is the hand shielding the camera from these so-called security lights. Thank you. <laughs> Discomfort and disability glare caused by overly bright and unshielded lighting can reduce visual acuity, decreasing safety, and also creating road hazards. I am not here to tell you to turn off all of your lights. Just use them when you need them and aim them where they actually help. We are the International Dark Sky Association, not dark ground. Luckily, it's fairly simple to protect and restore darkness with a more holistic approach to lighting design in our cities and homes. We can achieve dark sky friendly results by following these five principles for responsible outdoor lighting. Do you need the light at all? Install lighting only when and where it's needed. Aim the light down to the task at hand, not out into your neighbor's window or up into the night sky. Use only as much light as you need, no more. Install timers, dimmers, and motion sensors to reduce light usage and save on your energy bill. And finally, use warmer colored lighting. It's lower wavelength and generally less impactful to humans in the environment. And warmer lighting, it's more inviting like the firelight of our ancestors. Unlike other types of pollution that can be very difficult to remove from the environment, we can solve light pollution with the flip of a switch. You could say, at the speed of light. <laughs> it's a win-win for everyone. We save money, energy, wildlife, and our own human health, all while bringing back the awe and the wonder of the night sky. For millennia, stars have guided us, given us hope, and connected us as beings on one planet, in one spinning galaxy, riding through space and time, light and dark, together. If we lose the night sky, we lose a deep part of what it means to be human on Earth. By reaching out to shield or dim lights, or simply to flip off the switch, we practice doing big, ambitious things on behalf of ourselves and future generations. Next time you close your eyes, imagine that distant star, long passed into oblivion, but its light still beaming towards us across time and space. Let's clear the way for it in our minds, then open our eyes to clear the way for it in our lives, doing what we can to preserve our connection to the universe and each other. Instead of closing off our minds, our planet, and our lives to the wonder and hope of that star, let's welcome it with open skies. Thank you. Thank you.